Okay, so let me guess. You're upset that I'm not looking at a Sonic game today. Hello? Cardboard drawing? I refuse to talk to you when you have the nerve to look at other games besides Sonic. Well, you're gonna have to accept that I'm a gaming channel, and as a gaming channel, I have both obligations and desires to voice my opinion on lots of series, especially my favorite, Star Fox. I don't hear you making a Sonic video and swearing allegiance to... Um, to the fact that you'll be a Sonic gaming channel or something like that. What? Listen, I know what you want me to do, and I know that there are a lot of viewers who would only want me to do Sonic videos as well. And truth be told, if I did only do Sonic videos, I'd probably be getting a lot more views. Okay, now you're just being confusing. If it's what people want and it gets you more views, why are you being so... not Sonic-y? No, oh, and I'm still not talking to you. Because that's not why I have a YouTube channel, and that's not what's best for my channel either. Yeah, at first it seems like a pretty great idea. I got my first audience doing YTPs, and to this day, those are the videos that get the most views. Most subscribers are here for those, and more specifically, the Sonic Boom YTPs. So why do I make reviews, rants, let's plays, and such, when I could have been dedicating all my time to YTPs and getting lots more views? You don't seriously expect me to know the answer to that. Uh, or anything, do you? Because that would eventually lead to my channel's downfall. If you take a look at any successful YouTube channel, you'll see almost for sure that they've changed a little or a lot since they started. They may be doing the same kind of videos, but their humor, style, and everything has to keep up with the times in order to stay relevant. If I just did YTPs, people will get bored of them soon enough. And that doesn't mean that I need to stop making them, on the contrary, it just means that I have to keep doing them, but change and improve how I do them. You'll notice a huge difference between my old YTPs and new YTPs. Without that change, I probably would have lost a lot of the audience that I had. The fact that I change in many ways is also what ropes in a new audience and keeps the old audiences interested. By trying different styles and jokes with videos, I can appeal to different people who like different senses of humor, just as long as I keep the original things that worked well. Okay, so how does this apply to you making a Star Fox video instead of a Sonic one? Because just like with YTPs and any other videos, by changing things up from time to time, I can appeal to a Star Fox audience as well as Sonic fans, and eventually just video gamers in general. Of course, I don't just make videos for views either. I have a lot to say about a lot of different games, which is why I made this channel in the first place. So you're not gonna make Sonic videos ever again and you hate Sonic forever? No, now you're really overthinking it. My channel will always have Sonic-based content, and a lot of it, since I have so much to say about the series, and since my audience wants to see that. But if you can wrap your little cardboard mind around this, I need to think of what the viewers want, how to improve my channel, and stay true to what I want to do all at the same time. Which is... Make YTPs and gaming-related videos with a heavy emphasis on Sonic and other favorite series of mine, and today I want to make a Star Fox Assault video. I've been playing this game since I was in my early teens, and to this day, it's still one of my favorite multiplayer games on the GameCube. It's been heavily criticized in the past for being short, clunky, and lame. I always have and still do think it's really underrated. I'm not saying any of the criticisms it gets are wrong, but much like in most games I look at, that are seen as less than impressive, I think this game has a lot of great things about it that are almost always overlooked. And get this, this game to me shares extreme similarities to how I feel about Sonic Unleashed. <gasps> That's a Sonic game! Both Sonic Unleashed and Star Fox Assault have very similar reviews. Both games are divided into two gameplay styles. One game genre, the running levels for Sonic Unleashed, and the rail shooting segments in Star Fox Assault, being pretty fun, and the others, the Werehog levels in Unleashed and the ground missions in Assault, control clunkily and aren't so well loved. Both of these games also have some of the best graphics and styles in each of the respected series. Everything from the story to the graphics to the music are top-notch in both games. So just how much fun can you have with a game that many call the worst Star Fox game? A lot more than you would think. Let's take a look. Hmm. That was a good look. Okay, I'm sorry. A long time ago in 2005, in a galaxy in my GameCube, there were good guys in space and bad guys in space. Stinking ape! No, oh, buddy, watch your tongue. It's a kid's game. Such insults should be kept on fishing boats. So the Star Fox team is sent in to destroy Andross's nephew, Andrew the Derp. Awakening, you ignorant ape. Easy on the insults, guys. Man, much hate and profanities. You think you can win? Don't make me laugh. Yeah. The acting is real great. Hey, ten-year-old child acting styles and constant angry insults? It's beginning to feel a lot like Star Fox. Remind me never to sing again. So you get done with Andrew, and then you get attacked by these things called Aperoids, or as I call them, Space Butterflies. Dude, you have never called them that. SHUT UP! Aperoids apparently have been around for a while, and are just now showing back up. 
But how, you may ask, does the team know that they are aperoids? Well, General Pepper gives a very convincing case. How do you know? We know. And there you have it, I guess? Hello again, everybody! Hello again? Who the heck are you? I've never seen this guy in my life. Crooked glasses, sharpie marker, mustache. Come on, guys, get out of here. This guy's not safe looking. Dad? You're the research director? You never told me that. <laughs> well, gee, didn't I? Yes, in any case. No, not in any case. You've been lying to your son your entire life. You can't just say, oh, well, gee, I'm that anyway. So anyway, the quest is on to destroy the Aperoids and bring peace to the places around the, in the space and stuff. To do this, you need to do two things. Yell out insults and blow stuff up, of course. That's exactly what I want to do. Blow stuff up. Shoot first, talk later. You think Han Solo shot first? No, Fox McCloud shot first. So how do you destroy everything satisfyingly? Well, the missions are divided between the flying levels and the ground missions. There are ten total missions, about four of them are flying missions, and they're classic Star Fox on rails fun. The level design really isn't quite as good as the N64 installment, but it does feel like Star Fox. You save your wingmates, you dodge asteroids, and you defeat bosses. The rest of the missions are ground missions, where you control Fox directly as you use an assortment of cool weapons and, of course, blow stuff up. This is really fun, but only if you can get used to the controls. What I mean is, to keep the classic Star Fox feel, I would guess, they made Fox control like a tank or a vehicle. It's not really bad, per se, but it's not how you want to control a shooter. This is one of the main issues with the game, as you'll see in most reviews, but for some reason people don't seem to know that you can change the controls to dual stick style, like in Halo or Call of Duty, so you're using one control stick to move and the other to aim around. It works pretty well, I mean the C-stick isn't always easy to use, it is pretty small and not very precise. So the controls are never really perfect, but it's much better than trying to do parallel parking while you aim. I know that doesn't make much sense, but if you've played the game with regular controls, you'll know how it feels. For ground missions, you sometimes get to control this Landmaster, and no matter what kind of controls you're using, it is not easy to maneuver. I would say it controls like a tank, but eh, that's a little too fitting. One awesome thing about the main missions is that although there are more ground missions than air missions, there are some that are a mix of the two. You can switch between ground and R-Wing at will to complete objectives, and it's actually really awesome. It gives you a real feel of freedom, and with the massive courses, it just overall feels like a big game. Oh, hey Slippy, how's it going? Um, are you supposed to be doing anything? Something? Maybe? Alright then, I guess it's break time. You know, man, it's times like this that you really need to remember. When you take the time to... Slow down and soak in the moment. Don't interrupt me! Allow me to introduce myself. I am Panther, and all who see my rose meet death. Oh, so if I see your rose, I'll die? Have you ever looked at it before yourself, Panther? Because you know that would mean you'd have to be dead too. Did you ever think of that? Also, you're pretty awesome. So the story is kind of short, but very fun, and has some unlockables that are worth replaying for. Now on to what I consider the best part of the game, the multiplayer. Want to know why this is in my top multiplayer games list, which I haven't actually made yet, but I might actually make soon? Well, here's why. Crud load of massive courses. I mean, seriously, these are some of the biggest maps this side of Battlefield. Tons of crazy weapons for every style of gameplay, ground and air optionality, which may or may not be a word, unlockable items, weapons, vehicles, and characters, and so much more. Peppy, you know, I've never really gotten the chance to tell you this, but, you know, ever since my father died, you've been, well, you've been there for me and stuff, and, well, Peppy? Oh my god! So that's the game. Loads of fun, great graphics, a feel of freedom, and a variety of gameplay modes. Music, which, by the way, this is like one of the first Nintendo games to be fully orchestrated. And overall, I just love everything about this game. All in all, I see why some people dislike it. I mean, I really can't blame them. The controls aren't easy to get used to. But I really have no idea why some people would say it's the worst Star Fox game. The story is short, and the controls for the most part are pretty tough to get used to. So critically, I do agree with a lot of people and how they feel on this game. But if you go by the critical opinion, you're going to discriminate a lot of people from getting this game. A lot of people forget that the amount of fun that can be had with a game isn't always on par with how good or bad it is. And this is one of the examples of that. It may not be a good game critically, but with the multiplayer, the amount of freedom, the cool look of it, the music, everything about it, it's just a great time to be had. I've had more fun with this game than I've had with a lot of games in my time, making it one of my favorites. Well, I hope this video is just as likable, even though it wasn't for a Sonic game. 
Wait, you're done? You looked at a non-Sonic game and the world didn't end? Yeah, I... guess. Did your YouTube channel explode into a bunch of tiny pieces? No. You didn't check. Oh, look at that. Still no. Huh. Well, maybe this is a changing point for me. Maybe I should change things up from time to time, too. Like, maybe I'll be in a Mario game instead of Sonic games. Normally, I'd be very confused as to how that even came into your head, but I have come to terms with the fact that I'm talking to a piece of cardboard. Yeah, I'm not too happy with this incarnation. Next video, make me a plush or something that isn't one-dimensional. Wait, I forgot, you most likely won't have me in the next one, since I'm guessing it won't be a Sonic game again. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I should probably do Star Fox Adventures next. It would fit in pretty well with Assault. Yeah... Nah, I'm kidding. I'm doing Sonic Adventure next. Hey guys, Peter here to say that I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know why or how I can improve. If you have the time, sharing this video to your social medias would be muchly appreciated. For new videos almost every day, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And, as always, have yourselves a wonderful day. I leave you with this music from my channel's music provider, DJ Bass Fox 28